Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. This show is brought to you in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, Heidi, we have an interesting show today. Yeah. And you know, our number one of our number one visits at our website is on parent loss. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking today about adult and children parent loss and things that people need when they've had these kind of losses. Right, children in grief. And um, like you said, we're gonna be talking a lot about, about parents dying and what happens when they do. And you know, it's an interesting thing because as a, as a child and as a kid, you, you don't know your life without your parents. Mm -hmm. So having them die, it's like, okay, who am I now that I don't have a parent on this earth? Mm -hmm. And it kind of can feel like you're not anchored sometimes mm -hmm. without your parents. Absolutely, and we're gonna have a lady on who's had two parents die, but for a lot of kids, there's one parent, and our second guest is gonna have a lot of ideas for parents too on how they can help kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mom, as you said, our, our guest today is Christina Morrison. Hi, Christina. She Hi. is a jazz singer, producer, and an actor. And she will be joined later by Dr. Marion Sokol, who is the executive director for the Children's Bereavement Center in San Antonio, Texas. Right. Christina, it's great to have Hi, you Christina. on the show today. Hi. And she's uh, Ecuadorian also. We were just talking about it. You've kind of spent yes. half your time, and you're an Ecuadorian singer and actress as well as a uh, jazz singer and actress in the United States, yes. right? Yes, I am. I'm American Ecuadorian. My mother was from Ecuador and my dad from New York. Mm. Uh -huh. But he moved to Miami when he was very young, so I was born in Miami, and then I was raised between Ecuador and the United States, and now I live in New York. Wow. Yeah. So and I've go to Ecuador. Full circle, yeah. back to the roots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, you you, uh, your par tell us about your parents mm -hmm. and, w and what happened to them. Um, well, my father, uh, he passed away in 1993, very long time ago. And you were in your early 20s? I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I was studying actually at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts um, to be an actress. And I was with him in Miami, and he passed away on the day of my birthday. Wow. Which, I, it, you know, every year it's it's heavy, but yes. at the same time it's kind of a celebration because I, I always think about it that he did it on purpose in a way to mm -hmm. honor me because he loved me so well, much. Well, he was the reason that you're here in yes. the first place. He put, he helped bring you into this world. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he passed away in um, 1993. Was that was this a sudden death or was he? Ill? No, he had cancer. Okay. He had liver cancer, and he was in the hospital for a few months. So, so he was only ill for a few months. Well, you know, he had some some heart issues uh, okay. before, and then he got prostate cancer, and that was cured, and then he got liver cancer, and that was uh -huh. really what you know, very right. strong and aggressive. So. Mm. so, and you were close to him. Yes, I was close to him. Um, mm. You know, I, I didn't grow up with him, um, but I saw him quite often and he taught me to uh, love the ocean and mm -hmm. to go fishing and uh, to love nature which is a grand part of my my world right now because I, I I'm very close to the Galapagos Islands oh, and nice. I go there all the time and I always I feel that my dad was the one that brought that sense of love to mm -hmm. the ocean and to nature mm -hmm. ah, and I like the way you celebrate that I want to get uh, a little later on and some of the ways that you do connect with them because mm -hmm. I think that's important. And how about your mom? She was lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was. And lovely you are too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, she was a beautiful woman. Um, well, with my mom it was, you know, we were the two of us. Um, mm -hmm. I was an only child and she, we just had like this passionate love, hate relationship mm -hmm. where we, you know, we were always fighting to be ourselves and yeah. she was very possessive and passionate and and smart and cultured and sophisticated and everything and um was and she in a, uh, something to do with the newspaper in Ecuador or something? Yes, yes. Um, my family was in a media business for 106 years, 108. Wow. I don't even know how many years anymore. So I'm fourth generation. So my mother ran a TV station. Oh, wow. um, so I grew up in the studio. And, mm -hmm. and we were very close. We were just very different and at the same time um, very similar because, you know, mm -hmm. who, who I am today is what she also made of me in yeah. a way. And... Uh, we were just very close, and to lose her was just, you know, terrible much. I can mm -hmm. imagine, because they do struggle for breath. Yes, if she has, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult. And I, I actually dreamt um, a few months later that I was dying just like her. Uh -huh. and, and you know, like when you dream and you feel that it's, I mean, it's physical, you mm -hmm. know? 
and I felt exactly what she was feeling the moment that she was dying and it was it was horrible mm -hmm. like just taking those long last breaths now how have you connected with her well um, I, I have a really strong connection with my dreams since I'm it. a little girl mm -hmm. and I write about my dreams and and I um, and, and I just live through my dreams and I, I believe like in you know that in your other like ethereal body and you know that your soul and all that and and um, the day after she passed away the morning after I heard her say in my ear like super clear but like incredibly mm -hmm. clear she said don't be afraid you'll never be alone uh -huh. um, and that morning it was gonna be her mass and I and I just walked there and I felt you know sad as endlessly sad but at the same time I felt that that she was always going to be there and mm -hmm. that somehow mm -hmm. I'm sorry that's fine it's interesting that when we tell these stories too it kind of just brings up so much and we sometimes don't even know how it's going to impact us to revisit these mm -hmm. memories yeah. and these moments. And especially yeah. those mother-child relationships. Yes, they big. are so powerful. I mean, Heidi and I working together. Heidi yes. said we're enmeshed. And I said, yeah. right. <laughs> exactly. And, and I'm just thinking here you and your mom are we're the alone. Same. Like you, you two had to have a really strong, like you said, bond because it was the two of you. Yes. It was yeah. always the two of you. And, and to not have her on the earth all of a sudden must have been very strange. I mean, very she'd, lonely. she'd always been in your life. Very lonely. Now yeah. you've got your two boys. Yes, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> and you have your music. Yes. And you wrote a beautiful piece for your mother, right? And yes. you sing jazz everywhere. <laughs> yes, it's in my in my new album actually. Um it's a it's a piece called Vocalese from my mother. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And it's nice. it's about that. It's actually about the dreams and how I dream about her and that, you know, when you wake up, you find that that she's not there anymore and that mm -hmm. it's a reality. And then, you know, I think what you're expressing today is so important because I just don't, I don't think people think about sometimes how when they're an adult and they have a parent die that it's going to affect them that much. And I'm not sure how much, uh, and I know that many people like you are suffering uh, having a parent die. How mm -hmm. many years has it been now? Nine years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I love the, the connection. You're still connecting with it. But then you can still go on with your daily life and have her inspire you. Yeah, she does inspire me. Well, I feel her all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel her all the time in in my dreams, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and in your music, and in my writing. music. Yes, I, I, yes, I um, celebrate her through my music as well. But mm -hmm. I think that um, that it's. Um, it's always hard, you know, but it just made me stronger as well, you know, to lose her in a way. Mm -hmm. It made me very strong. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm thinking too, you've lost both your parents. And I know that I've had, I've had people that I've known and worked with in France um, that have said, you know, it's weird because I'm an orphan. Mm -hmm. And it feels really weird to even say that word, but I don't have parents here anymore. Yeah. And you know, I know when my husband, he's lost both his parents, and I know when his dad died, he said, you know, one of the hardest things for me is I, I always did everything to make my dad proud. And now when I do something, I can't call him mm -hmm. and tell him because he would have been so proud of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think about that all the time. Like when I do, when I have things, for example, in my, in my work and my career that, mm -hmm. that are going well for me in a way that I feel proud about where I am or what I'm doing, what I'm achieving. I always, I always feel the lack of, you know, of her being here, my dad, and, and being able to share those accomplishments and, mm -hmm. and also, for example, of seeing my kids, you know, they, they didn't really, m my mother, yes, she, she was very bonded with, with my eldest, with Alex, and with Joaquin was smaller, so th they didn't get too much time together. My dad never knew them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very sad in, in that sense as well that they never got a chance to see their grandchildren and, mm -hmm. my, and my kids to have a grandparent, you know. It's, it's kind of a sense of family is not mm -hmm. is not quite you know whole mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I, I agree with that because my parents thankfully are still here for my kids but my husband's parents aren't mm -hmm. so they they don't know they haven't been able to you know they've never my grand my father-in-law hasn't even met my daughter he never met her so yeah they grew up without that set of grandparents and it's yeah. hard yeah it is yeah, yeah. It is. it's difficult well i want to thank you for being on the show today it's it's been great having you on and and we're going to have another guest who's going to come on and talk to us a little bit 
about how you can help kids after they've had a loss, some of the younger kids. And so let's uh, take a look at the role in for her show, Marion Sokol. Welcome to the Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas. When you walk through our doors, you enter an amazing place, a place filled with caring staff, overflowing with compassion and empathy for the loss you and your loved ones may have suffered. The living room is where adult groups meet on a regular basis. In the dining room, children and their families share meals. The kitchen is a bright, welcoming room. Upstairs are several special rooms where children, teens, and young adults can meet in groups or for individual counseling. There is an art room where youngsters can express their feelings through a variety of creative media. And there are several activity spaces where children and teens can vent their emotions. The theater space features a stage and adjacent costume storage area where youngsters can act out their feelings. There's even a time machine for children and teens to transport themselves back to a time when all was well. Youngsters can also enjoy the state-of-the-art playground and grassy space to burn off energy. The Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas. It's more than just a building. It is a place committed to linking hearts, mending spirits, transforming lives. Marion, welcome to the show. And I was just thinking with Christine, I wish there was an adult center like that. <laughs> yeah, that that's sad. I really well. do. I mean, you can have all those things for adults, yeah. playrooms that they could do, things that they right. could do. Well, there's I mean, a project for someone. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> but talk to us a little bit about your center, and thank you for oh, being on the show. You're amazing. You. Well, thank you, Gloria and Heidi. And I'm, I'm honored to be here. And I know you've recently been honored by First Candle. So... I want to acknowledge that. Well, Our I just want to say we were given an award in your name. Thank you. And we were so honored to have it in your name because you have helped thousands of grieving children. And this, this center that you have is absolutely phenomenal. And oh. done a tremendous amount with stillbirth. I mean, mm -hmm. you have uh, yes. uh, an Thank amazing you. history of helping. Thank you. Our center is uh, very unique, mm -hmm. although there are 100 centers across the country. So I don't want anyone to feel that if they don't live in San Antonio that there aren't wonderful people who can help in wonderful mm -hmm. places. The center in San Antonio works with about 1,000 children a year, though. So we're one of the larger ones. And when I say works with, we have actually a staff of 15, wow. six full-time counselors who are play therapists. Um, they have expertise in art therapy and music and really understand the children. Mm -hmm. And we have so many different types of losses, as, as Christina has conveyed. It's, it's hard at any age, but when you're a child and you don't even understand how ill a parent may be, or you go to school one day and find out there's been an accident or a homicide, a suicide, we, um, we work with the children all day doing individual counseling, and then we're open six days a week, so each evening as well on Sunday as well as on Sundays we have support groups we do pet therapy with the sibling group mm. Mm. we have camps for children and we really try to help the children heal we do that very much in an expressive arts therapy because children can't find the words a lot of times it's mm -hmm. just difficult mm -hmm. to find the words mm -hmm. and so through play they are able to express themselves and once they can tell the story, try to make sense of the story, then we... Now, now if I'm listening to this through play, if I, if play is a great way for me to work with my kids mm -hmm. Absolutely. and with anybody. Absolutely. We do a lot of art also, okay. mm -hmm. uh, memorializing the parent they've lost or the brother and sister, picture frames, photos, poetry. Some of our children have written beautiful poems about their, their parents or their brothers and sisters. Uh, music. We have a music room. There you go. And just, in way. fact, I brought a few things. Okay. Um, yeah. The children we serve range from ages 3 to 24, so it's quite a, a large mm -hmm. age range. For our little ones, we have little huggy dolls, as yeah. we call them. I love that. And this is actually a place where they can tuck in a picture of oh, mommy look or at dad. That. That and so, so they can come great. to group. <laughs> 
and yeah. they're soft and hugs a huggy doll. <laughs> and that early age, it's really hard for them to understand that That's mommy amazing. or daddy aren't coming back. Oh and God. we read books, we tell stories, and uh, those the days that the li little hearts is what we call that group. The days that they come is it's just very special for for all of us. And there are so many that I think as they go on, we'll understand better. But mm -hmm. right now, Dad may have been a serviceman. We're very much a military city. Mm -hmm. And so they bring that huggy doll. They know they can talk about Daddy mm -hmm. or Mommy and uh, take it home to bed with them. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and then for in working with some of the arts, we talk a lot about feelings and emotions. When we have summer camps for children, we take them to the Playhouse Theater, and we talk about how we look, and we ask them to draw masks mm -hmm. about how they look on the outside. And majority of them will come up with a you know rosy-cheeked, smiling mask. But on the other side, we ask them to draw a mask about how they really feel. And I picked this one up, and you can see mm. it's red, which is probably uh -huh. symbolic, and there are tears. I love that. I saw one last week, and inside it was literally a, the scream. The, the mouth was wow. almost, you know, uh, vertical, and it had up here, why me? Oh, so, wow. So, you yeah. know, these children, Powerful. a lot of them, they go back to school, and yet they don't feel normal by any means, mm -hmm. and they don't feel that anyone understands them. So and really, what, I, what yeah. I love about that mask is that it, it normalizes it for children. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, we all have our bases, so you don't know what people are going through, so they don't feel like, okay, why am I the only one that's feeling mad or angry or upset on the inside? They see that it's not just you, it's, it's a lot of children that are grieving. It's a normal way to feel. Absolutely. And forgive me, I brought this up on the airplane with me. <laughs> we work a lot with glass. Oh. We, and when you think about glass, we buy boxes of shattered glass. Mm -hmm. And yet, oh, when you put the glass together, wow. when you fuse it, it can again become something beautiful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And we talk about a family that is affected by death. When death mm -hmm. occurs, how broken and shattered they feel. And when they go through that fire, then somehow they become stronger and closer and beautiful again. So this, is, this was done by a child. And the children, Wonderful. they're very, uh, very careful about which pieces they pick. It's very meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. So this is one of our uh, fused art pieces. That's, that's beautiful. I love that. I love that concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do too. Finally, flower pots. <laughs> oh, wow. We take flower pots. We have big ones, little ones. Mm -hmm. We work with families who work with children. And we put them in, in a pillowcase. We have a pillowcase that's been especially made for that child and gently break the flower pot. And then on the inside of the curved pieces, we ask the children to write how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you see any oh, yeah. of those words? Yeah. Depression. A angry. Mm -hmm. The way my teacher treats me has me something changed. changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has changed. Has changed the way I, she I treats feel, me. That's a yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel guilt, point. sad, upset, depressed, surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is great. It does. And then we bring that out later and we put it together again and it's almost symbolic that it's not quite whole that mm -hmm. there are pieces missing and we ask them to write on the outside of the exterior pieces about how they're feeling now and so you'll see some, usually like this one some happy pictures this one says I think dance mm -hmm. dancing mm -hmm. I, I saw football and it has a story also and I won't read it but this is a memory this uh, the child who wrote this lost her sister mm -hmm. and talks about when they used to go to the beach together. Uh -huh. And so sometimes we even put a plant in this to say it's not the way it was, but it's still whole mm -hmm. and it can mm -hmm. still support life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is really um, a wonderful opportunity to bring children together and also to build their confidence. We mm -hmm. recently took a group of 47 children to an outdoor camp, kept them for, th well, we didn't keep them for three days, <laughs> they kept us. I think they wanted to stay longer. But uh, we did zip, zip lines, mm -hmm. healing circles, bonfires, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one, I know uh, you had them do singing support. because I was watching one we of the did. camp things and they were <laughs> singing, singing, singing. They made a song and they would not stop singing it. They actually <laughs> wrote the song themselves. So. Uh, most wonderful. of our children stay with us about a year. Some of them stay longer. 
we do the individual counseling because some children aren't ready to go into groups right away. Mm -hmm. They may, may need some time. If it, if it was a death by suicide, they may not even understand what happened. Mm -hmm. But eventually, most of them go on in groups, and that, we feel, is just the tremendous normalizing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one of my favorite uh, stories are, uh, are the camp that we had two little boys. They were eight or nine years old. They met each other. They were instant friends. And we have a drama room also where they can play and act. They dressed up in Spider-Man and Batman costumes. They, for three days, they stayed in these. They slept in these in their sleeping bags with their <laughs> pillow pets. And the second day, they wore each other's shoes. And the third day, they wore one of each. Uh -huh. oh, wow. And they just became best friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that community with grief is so mm -hmm. important, isn't it? It really is. And for children to see that other children have gone through a death. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when children go to school and around their friends, nobody's had that experience. Right. right. Yeah. And it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. We have one little boy that was really upset because he said the children in school teased him because he didn't have any parents. Mm -hmm. And he lived with his grandparents, who are wonderful. But he was just different. And nobody right. comes for a parent mm -hmm. back to school. <laughs> right. And this time of year, we're just getting ready uh, for a holiday shop, as we call it, where the children can come to our house, which is beautiful, it's about 10,000 square foot, and go shopping. Uh -huh. We take our boardroom, we fill it with Christmas presents that are donated, but they're not gifts for the children. Mm -hmm. They're gifts for caretakers, so their grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, mm -hmm. the surviving mom or dad, and they come in, and they go with one of our student interns into the room, and they pick out the gifts that they want for the people that they love that are still taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And then they go upstairs, wrap the gifts. We have Santa Claus. Oh, nice. We have uh, cookie baking. I must say, though, last year, I'm, I, I love these children so much. And most of the time, we are smiling. But I just was almost um, speechless. We had one little boy go up to Grandpa, to uh, Santa Claus and ask if uh, Santa could bring the daddy back. Oh. Mm. So they're just uh, really precious children mm -hmm. and they need a lot of tender loving care and they also need uh, therapists that understand how to work with them, mm -hmm. how to help them to tell the story mm -hmm. and to help them to feel they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so important. And how, how to express mm -hmm. themselves. Sometimes they don't have the words. Like you said, they can draw mm -hmm. it out, they can act it out, they can play it out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, I just wondered, you two sitting together, we've got a little different mm -hmm. thing. We have adult person or, and 23, what, and you, you do deal with 23-year-olds. We year do. Old, so. After age 16, most of what we do is in individual therapy, mm -hmm. although we're delighted when someone, you know, meets a, a friend their own age, but most of what we do over age 16 You know, is we had uh, Bessel van der Kolk on our show, and he works with trauma, and he said that uh, one of the things that's important for adults also, and, and for children, is art, creative, mm -hmm. singing, dancing, theater, because it gives people the possibility of imagination. And he said mm -hmm. that's what you lose when you've had a trauma. You, you can't begin to mm -hmm. imagine life being better again. Mm -hmm. And it gives you, yeah. imagination pushes you into, okay, mm -hmm. I could do this piece of art, I could do this piece of glass. You know, there's some things that I could do. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, and that draws you to the future. And, mm -hmm. and he actually says it opens a part of your brain, the amygdala, it actually stimulates a part mm -hmm. of the brain mm -hmm. to um, want, to, the creativity, creative area mm -hmm. in the brain is a little bit different. So it kind of mm -hmm. moves you, you know, into that area. I think so. our art is very cathartic. Mm -hmm. How, is that yeah. the right yeah, word? Right. Yeah. And, and through expressing mm -hmm. what you're feeling and, and uh, through art is, is amazing. I mean, you just go with it and, and Mm -hmm. It's it it, it, it mm -hmm. you let go you know mm -hmm. so that's why it, it must be so you know important for for kids mm -hmm. to be able to do what you do mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it and and theater uh, where you take the roles of other people right I mean that's. Mm -hmm. For the kind little ones, the puppetry. They yes. love the puppetry. We have curtains with different backdrops. We have one mm -hmm. that looks like a storm, so we can talk about the day of the auto accident or have the puppets do that. Mm -hmm. And we have another one that looks like a hospital room because oh, wow. many of these children have spent many weeks and months in hospital mm -hmm. rooms mm -hmm. with people they love. 
and then we have another that looks almost like an escalator up into the clouds. Oh, okay. wow. And we use that, we consider ourselves spiritual rather than religious, but we use that to let the children and the puppets talk about someday that maybe they'll see the person they love mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that, and I love using the puppets because it's, mm -hmm. it's so much safer to talk about what I'm experiencing as mm -hmm. a child if I'm doing it through a puppet. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the so, words that can be said and yeah. all that kind of thing. Yeah. That, that is great that you, mm -hmm. that you provide all that opportunity and all those backdrops and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I'm thinking of the healing power of music, too, because you yeah. sing, and I think that's another way to express ourselves is through And music. the jazz. Talk about through the writing. jazz, because you're mm -hmm. a, a jazz singer. So how does that, does that give you a little more freedom? <laughs> well, to... I mean, I write my lyrics, so okay. really the creativity for me is, is in the writing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where I express what I feel and mm -hmm. about my loves or my losses or, or places or, you know, uh, feelings, emotions, that's yeah. where I express it through my writing and in the lyrics and then um, and then I, I, I fuse different genres so it stems out of jazz but I have a little bit of Latin and bossa and bolero mm -hmm. and mm. cha-cha so I, I mix everything up and it's mm -hmm. it's it's fun and it's it, it, it's very you know letting go it's it's a it's a great way to express. Yeah, and, and you always say fun. I mean, I like that's it. what fun. you're talking it's about here too. Yes. The things that you're showing are actually fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could actually have something fun again. Well, well, that's what I like. We can have something fun again, like you're saying. It gives kids this this feeling all of a sudden, and adults. Wow, I'm feeling I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling, and I'm talking about my loved one in it that I'm feeling positive. So I'm really celebrating their life and connecting with them. Mm -hmm. In a new and different way. I think with the with the little you know huggy and stuff you do, you're saying to the kids it's safe to think about your parent. Mm -hmm. It's all oh, through your gosh. life you'll be thinking about your parent. You know they'll always mm -hmm. be your, your mom and dad, and I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for oh. being on the show today. Well, thank and you, fantastic, and so thank you for the work you do and for the inspiration mm -hmm. you both are. Thank you, Absolutely. thank you, thank you so much. And mm -hmm. thanks for watching the show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. And Heidi and I always want to remind you, if you've lost hope, please lead on ours until you find your own. And God bless. Mm -hmm.